welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to have a virtual visit to the Charles H. Taylor Art Gallery. Um, actually, some of, uh, some of their paintings have been brought here to the studio so we can have a taste of what's going on there. My guest is James Warwick Jones. Hello. Good morning, Robin. Great welcome. to be back. Yeah, it's good. It's been a little while. It has been a while. I find that, this is sad, I go to the gallery more when you've brought the paintings in and I've gotten all excited mm -hmm. about them and I, I hope our guests are that way too and that, uh, you know, they think about visiting these paintings once you give us a taste. That's, that's wonderful. Um, we just brought a few today, but they're actually 113 in the show, so there are a hundred more. You know, that is, there's so much space mm. inside that gallery once you get in. And, and mm. you know, with the walls and semi-walls you've built, you kind of get a chance to really walk around yeah, and there. it holds a lot. We've got six galleries and I, I could just bring paintings today because of the glare on the glass mm -hmm. and also the sculpture, but they're all media. We have wonderful photographs, drawings. It's a huge drawing by one of our uh, class instructors. Uh, sculpture, crafts, and some very large pieces too. So I brought a sampling uh, of oil paintings and acrylic paintings today that we could look at. All right, well, let's start because I'm really excited to hear more about these. Okay. So you're going to start with the one on your right, the very close up. This one is um, an acrylic painting by Ivy Garrington, who is, uh, lives in Newport News. It's Virginia artist juried exhibition, so there are artists all across the state, but there uh, is a good representation of artists from here in Tidewater. Um, this is a large scale painting. It's actually larger than life. Mm -hmm. It's called After the Wedding. It's very expressively painted. Um, some of the works I brought today are very realistic ones. These are more expressive. It's like an action painting. You see the brush strokes. You Big see brush the, strokes. The, the paint dripping down. Yeah, colors um, that aren't realistic, but that blended sort of create that emotion. Exactly. So it kind of harks back to the painting of the 60s, action painting it was called, and a little bit more abstract. Uh, the further away you get, the more realistic it looks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you get up close, you begin to say, hey, that's not what an eyebrow looks like. But further away, right. it creates exactly. movement. In, yeah. And that's great. Uh, the next painting we're looking at is by Stephanie Scott. It's called Passageway. This is a mixed media work. A lot of artists today are working in mixed media, so you have a combination of... You know, from far away, you can't tell that, and then mm. you get up close. There's a lot going on. It looks like some kind of fiber, string material going on. There's a pattern, which might be wallpaper or some other printed pattern the artist has used. Um, kind of a limited palette, uh, greens and tans and browns. And who is this you said? I'm sorry. This is Stephanie Scott, and um, she's another area artist. Um, so the the works in the show kind of run the gamut. They're I was going to say, you can't get more varied almost than those two. It really does, in that and the works we brought today sort of represent that. They're pieces that are almost totally abstract, like this piece, more expressive, uh, impressionistic, um, and, and photorealist. So it kind of runs the gamut. It does. Most of the shows we do are like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I found too. Is you mm -hmm. can't, you don't really know what you're going to see until you get in there, and exactly. it's usually deeper and more varied. Yeah. No matter what the theme is, people take it in different directions. Exactly. And this mm -hmm. one less theme and more just juried. Correct. Works. There was no theme. The the uh, juror Teresa Annis uh, selected works that she thought were original, uh, personal, expressive. Uh, commanded the, the medium, whatever it was. And it's a very diverse show. Okay, let's talk about this one that's sitting here in between us. This piece is called Icarus Daughter, Sienna. And actually one of the stagehands was asking about, the, there is actually the title of the, or at least part of the title of the painting right in the painting, which looks like it was done with gold paint. Mm -hmm. And it's the it's kind of the ancient folk tale of Icarus, uh, uh, made wings out of bird feathers with wax attached, and he and the, his son, I think they were escaping from some island. There's really no reference to his daughters flew in that. Too close to the sun, right? Exactly, it melted. It melted. So you but see the you see the feathers falling. The um, get in the way of the painting. The um, reference to the daughters is I don't think in that story. So it, the artist took some liberties. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's not unusual for artists to take artistic license and uh, interpret it in a different way. So it's kind of a, in a way, it's kind of a surreal piece. It also has a narrative, has a kind of a storytelling. If you're familiar with the story, you make that connection with the feathers. Uh, but beautifully painted, very, uh, almost in kind of a traditional old master uh, technique, the figure, especially in the portrait. Mm -hmm. Each year, um, the top award winner, Best in Show, uh, wins $1,500, which is nice. That's not a bad, That's not uh, bad. yeah. In total, we give almost $7,000 on awards. And the, the top award winner also has a one-person show the following year. So this painting um, is by Mark Miltz, a wonderful painter, beautifully uh, painted a portrait. And Mark won the top award last year, so this year he's having a one-person show. And it's a really in interesting installation. There are a lot of drawings in the show, unframed drawings that you can buy. And they're also very finished portraits like this uh, painting. Um, the, uh, the name of the show is called Slices of Life. All of the paintings in the show are done from life. So we had, in this instance, Mark working with a group of fellow artists. They hired a model, did portraits of her, uh, beautifully painted. He also is a member of the Norfolk Drawing Group. They meet every week and they have a model and draw from life. And a lot of those drawings are in the, in the exhibition too. Most of them done in 20 or 30 minutes. Oh, really? He's very, quick kind of a virtuoso uh, draftsman, very beautifully drawn and very quickly kind of capturing the, the essence of the subject. That's neat and very different with this, you know, painting being very detailed and mm -hmm. finished versus some of the sketches. Exactly, it's a contrast in the show. And there are figures, there are portraits, there's landscape uh, and uh, still life. But it's primarily figures and portraits in that show. And this show um, runs through when? Goes through October the 11th. So and it'll be up a while. This one, you know, a lot of, most of your shows, maybe I'm misstating, draw from more around the region. That's but correct. But this one from the whole state gives people an opportunity to see artists from other parts of the state and not have to travel. Exactly. There are artists from all across the state, Richmond, Roanoke, Northern Virginia. Um, Hampton Roads is well represented, but there are artists that, that are not normally uh, in the area exhibiting their work. So that's another nice component of the show. And as always, it costs nothing to come free, by and visit your gallery. Free admission, always free admission. And um, we also have our uh, fall classes beginning about the time of the school year, around mid-September, second week in September. And we usually offer around 20 classes. Wow. Um, Mary Lee Ruff, who won the top drawing award in the show, was our drawing instructor for adult classes. And this fall, she's doing a new class. She's been doing a drawing class with us for several years. We're going to do a beginning drawing. Yay. So this is, this is perfect for artists, not artists, people who, would, <laughs> who want to be artists. Hey, that's a better way to maybe, put it. Maybe a little hesitant to, to begin, a little uh, anxious about that. But this is for the real beginners, the people who say, I can't even draw a straight can't. line. Exactly, like me, people this is, like me. This is a class for, for you, Robin. <laughs> so we're offering that for the first time in the fall. We're also having, really for more advanced students, um, a workshop, a one-day workshop on silver point drawing. And this is a very traditional technique going way back to Leonardo and Michelangelo and the very early artists uh, used this medium which is actually a, a, draw, a line drawn with a metal, a metal wire. Oh, wow. So that'll be a one-day workshop. Uh, Barbara Henning Loomis, who also won an award in the, in the show, will be teaching that one. And then the other new class for the fall, um, italic calligraphy. Betsy Rivers Kennedy from Norfolk has been teaching calligraphy for 30 or 40 years. So she's doing a workshop. Uh, it's the first time we've had calligraphy for quite a while. That sounds like a lot of fun. And, and a range, too, yeah. you know, for people who have more or less developed skills. We might have some of the mm. skills and always been afraid to, uh, to try them. Yeah. And you are teaching some classes, I as you always the, do. I teach the painting classes. We do three, three painting classes each week. Um, 
Tuesday afternoon, Thursday night, and Saturday morning, so people that are working have a chance to, to come to the classes too. We try to do that with, with all the classes when we can, to schedule it so everybody can participate. And your classes, I mean, some of them are upstairs in a classroom, but some of them are right in the middle of that main gallery. Right. We have uh, actually the two drawing classes are in the gallery and our photography classes. Forgot to mention photography. We've got beginning uh, digital camera. We've got intermediate um, and probably going to start a more advanced class soon in photography. And actually, we have also yoga in the galleries. We're kind of branched that a little bit from the visual arts and that class is twice a week in the gallery so it's a really nice atmosphere to, mm -hmm. to practice yoga. I like sometimes coming by to see the exhibits when there's a class in the <laughs> gallery because you get extra yeah. you know and people are talking and you're listening and, mm -hmm. and watching them paint it mm -hmm. adds uh, just an extra element of, yeah. of it's interest. Fun. Uh, it's fun I think for the the visitors to see the drawing class going on and they can kind of get a little taste of what that is a little preview in case they might be interested mm -hmm. too so we we and we generate some students that way too people coming in and kind of get get hooked on what's going on yeah i can see that it sounds like a lot of fun it's going to be a be a busy fall all right speaking of busy fall after this exhibit leaves you brought a couple of samples from your next one. I did, and the the um, the juried exhibition is no well. There is a sixty inch size limitation, so we have paintings that are yeah. about five foot. Wow. Now we're going to the other extreme. Small works. These are miniatures and all media, and I brought a couple. I don't know if you can see those. You might there want to pick. The, why don't you pick it up and hold it? This is um, a little acrylic painting on a panel by Gemma Wallace. It's actually a, the self-portrait of the eye of the artist. Um, done a series of these. These are, this is about four by four inches. So we're going from five feet down to four inches. The maximum size for those is a 20 square inches, four by five. Here's a little landscape of Hilton Village acrylic on a wood panel. This one's four by five. Wow. I'm trying to get it level. I'm looking backwards <laughs> in the camera there. Trying to make sure they can see it. And again, although I just brought paintings today, that show will have all media too. So we have sculpture, we'll have jewelry, we'll have even quilting, um, photography, drawing, all media. They're just tiny works. And because they're tiny, we have a lot of them. That's right. You get to see more. You get more for your money, which is <laughs> <Right>. free. <laughs> but, you know, you can spend a little extra time. And, you know, some of those little ones are so detailed. Yeah. That, that you know, that self-portrait of the eye, there's, I mean, wow. One of the um, one of the arts writers, I sent a press release for this show a couple of years ago with images. And uh, he emailed me back and said, they don't look like miniatures. Right, because <laughs> they, when they look like large pieces when because of the slide, you can't tell the scale. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, some of them are like that. To look at a digital image of it, or even look at the the actual artwork, it looks like it could be on a much larger scale because of the the uh, technique that's used by the artist. Yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. It always amazes me to go into your galleries, and you have. Um, I mean, you being here today and, and giving us the curated tour and telling us a little mm -hmm. bit about each one, but you have notebooks in each of the galleries with, depending on what the artist chooses to send in, some additional information right. about the artist or about the painting or, or the work. I shouldn't just say painting. But, you know, people have the mm -hmm. opportunity to walk through and just absorb it or spend a little more time or come back, All you right. know. The uh, juror did a wonderful job this year during the awards presentation. She spoke a little bit about each of the artworks, which was really helpful and, and interesting, too, to get, get her personal perspective of it. And we also have, usually for each exhibition, we have a gallery talk with the artists, invite them to come in and talk about their work, gives people a chance to meet the artist, ask them questions, and find out more about the work on a more personal level, too. Okay, and some of these works are for sale, not all, but... Mm -hmm. um, most but of some, them and you, well, you want to go early because <laughs> well, some of them get snapped up really quickly. We had a big crowd at the reception, uh, I guess that was last Sunday, and sold several works there. So, yep. And the prices vary. I mean, you know, I, you can't ever predict what there's going to be, but, but there's um, things that even I can afford, and then there's <laughs> things that I can't afford, but, right. you know, would love to come look at some right. more. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like that, too. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Okay, well, thank you again. Why don't you tell us the gallery hours before we close? We're open Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 6, Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 5, and um, Monday we're, we're working behind the scenes. Right, right. I don't, know how, I don't know how you keep this level of exhibits going. It's like almost every six weeks they're changing up, and it's a, it's a real... Hampton residents are lucky to have this asset. We've got a lot going on. You do. Thank and you, And you can Jim. find out about that on our website, hamptonarts.net, or you can call us, 727-1490. So That's right. And if they come look. by the gallery, they can get a copy of the Diversions magazine, which will tell them not only what's going on at the Charles H. Taylor Art Gallery, but also what's going on at the American Theater. Exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Robin. Great to be back. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this mini art tour and mini gallery, and that you will go to Charles H. Taylor and see the rest of the exhibit. Thanks for watching.